ready. Because if you stay ready, you can stay standing. We're going to go right in the scriptures. I'm going to let you sit back down. Stay ready, then you don't have to what? Get ready. ready. You don't have to get ready. We're talking about staying ready in God, maintaining your spiritual breakthrough. Amen? Amen. We've been talking about, more specifically, the last two weeks, overcoming what? Discouragement. Discouragement. Life's hard knocks. God is not finished with you. Amen? Turn to your next neighbor. Neighbor. You look great today. You look great today. I mean, absolutely awesome. I mean, absolutely but awesome. But God has not called you. But God has not called you. To live in hard knocks. To live in hard knocks. God has called you to. God has called you to. The good life. The good life. The abundant life. The abundant, the abundant life. life. That's found in Christ. That's found in Christ. Amen. Amen. Christ. Amen. Amen. We're going to look at 1 Samuel chapter 30, verses 1 through 4. Six through eight. You're going to read one through four with me. Then I'm going to pray. And then you're going to sit down and I'm going to do the heavy lifting. Amen? Amen. 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 Are y'all ready to read the scripture with us? Yes. We understand that become church when we read the word, the word reads us. Yes. Amen? Amen. It reads us. Amen? Amen. It, 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 so put yourself in 4D right now as we read the word and see what David's situation was in Samuel. We'll start at the first verse. Let's read. Now it happened when David and his men came to Ziglag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south at Ziglag and burned it with fire and had taken captive the women and those who were there from small to great. They did not kill anyone but carried them away and went their way. So David and his men came to the city, and there was burned with fire, and their wives, their sons, their daughters had been taken captive. And then David and the people who were with him lifted up their voices and wept until they had no power to weep. Let's bow our heads. Father, we just thank you right now for every person under the sound of my voice. Holy Spirit. Spirit of the living God, Howard sits down. Holy Spirit, you stand up. Speak to us like only you can. You have a way of speaking to our hearts like we're the only ones in the room. Would you do that for us today, kind sir? We'll give you the honor, the glory, and the praise. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Let the words that are spoken bring transformation to each and every hearer from the inside out. Transformation is the goal. We don't need reform. We need a whole change. Tear it up from the floor up, God, like only you can. In Jesus' name. 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 In Jesus name. Amen, and amen and amen. If you believe God heard you, say, speak to me, Lord, and have a seat. Amen. Hallelujah. Again, I want to talk to you again about the school of, you just keep that with you. School of hard knocks, overcoming life, hard knocks, because God is not finished with you yet. Turn to somebody and say, neighbor, I'm bothering you again. You're that awesome. But I got to let you know. God is not finished with you yet. Okay, I want somebody, now find somebody else. I want everybody to find somebody. Don't talk to yourself. Everybody find somebody. Say, neighbor, you look awesome. You look great. But I got to let you know prophetically, God is not finished with you yet. Your best is yet to come. Amen, amen. The worst is behind you, and your best is yet to come. Amen? Come on, give God praise for that. If you believe that, now if you don't believe it, just, but if you believe it, how many know there's power in your words? You prophesy to yourself. You prophesy to your neighbor, amen? Your best is yet to come. Now, as always, with our lessons, all I want you to do is learn one thing. There's going to be a lot of things shared, but how many things you got to learn? One thing. And that one thing is what? My, requ my peace requires my participation. 
My peace requires my participation. Amen? So we're going to get right into it. Amen? First Samuel. How many, how many have ever been discouraged? Raise your hand. Ever. Just come on. Come on. Look around. I want, to, I want you to look. Raise your hands and look around in the room. Amen? And if everybody's telling the truth, that's everybody. Let me put two hands up. Are you with me? Because no matter how spiritual you are and how much you love God, guess what? The Bible talks about how we're going to go through fiery trials, challenges in life. Amen? But here's the thing. We go through the challenges, but the challenges don't own us. We own the storm. Amen? Amen. God will get, cause you to thrive in the midst of the storm as you drive through the storm. Amen? So let's look at 1 Samuel chapter 30. And just to, I'm going to recapitulate a little bit the first three points of what we went over last week, and then I'm going to give you the new three points, if time permits, of where we're headed. Amen? If not, we'll just uh, hit one, and then we'll hit the rest for next week. The Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 30, 1 through 4, it says this, in 6 through 8. Now David, again, after, the, every, after he was aided by Ziglag, and he took his wife, his children, do you think he was happy? No, he was sad. He was even depressed. The Bible, the scripture says that David was greatly distressed. And I looked this word up in the Hebrew and it speaks of being so and full of anxiety, discouragement, fear. Have you ever been scared of the unknown? Have you ever been Scared of what tomorrow may hold because the situation was so bad. That's where David was. For the people, look, his own people, his crew, his friends, they spoke of stoning him because the soul of all the people were grieved as well. Every man for his sons and his daughters. How many know hurt people hurt people? Guess what? And when we're in a hurting situation, it's so important that you have believers that you can call that are full of faith to strengthen you in your faith, yes. not just get in a pity party with you. What's a pity party? You know, you call somebody, you know, I'm doing bad. And they say, well, I'm doing bad too. And then they say, we doing bad. It ain't fair that we're going through. It ain't fair that you're going through. Oh my God, let's pity party. But you need to call up some people that are going to have a praise party with you. They may say, oh, you're going through right now, but you know what? The Bible says all things are working together for your good. It doesn't say that all things are good. That means you got to go through some things, but by the end, you're going to end up on top. Are y'all with me? The Bible says that he's able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. That means you may be feeling like you're falling right now, but he's going to catch you. The Bible says also that in the book of Psalms 23 that goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. So if you're falling back, guess what? You're falling on his goodness and his mercy, and that's going to carry. Are y'all with me? He goes on to tell David that he has, David says, I have never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed beg for bread. Go broke. So guess what? God got you. He's your provider. He is Jehovah Jireh. Your prov are y'all with me? The Bible, people are talking about you. Old people are talking about me. The Bible says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue that rises up in judgment shall be condemned. That's the promises for the people of God. Meanwhile, let's get back to the story. But David encouraged himself in the Lord in the midst of all of his grief, in the midst of all of his pain. He had, a, <laughs> he had to participate in his peace by encouraging himself in the Lord. Amen? Then David said to Abiathar the priest, I mean, he's ready to go into prayer. He says, Ahimelech's son, please bring me the ephod here to me. That was like the robe of righteousness. Now in the New Testament, we're New Testament believers. The Old Testament is the New Testament concealed. The New Testament is the Old Testament what? Revealed. Guess what? We have a robe of righteousness that comes from Christ Jesus. We can enter into the gates of heaven because of his death on the cross and the blood that was sacrificed for us. So and they be after bought to Ephod to David. So David required of the Lord saying, shall I pursue this truth? Shall I overtake them? And look, God answered. How many of you say, God always has an answer? 
He has an answer. Amen. You just got to wait for it. He'll confirm it and reaffirm it. He said, most time we pray and we just get up and we don't want to listen to what he has to say. Are y'all with me? And he answers and pursue for you shall surely overtake them and without fail recover all. Everybody say recover all. Amen. And so I want to give you uh, six ways God has equipped you to encourage yourself on today. Six ways he has equipped you to encourage yourself. And let me go back and give you the QR code. Is that QR code still there? Yes. Go ahead and get that QR code so you can get the notes. I thought I had the two things that we went over last week. Oh, yeah, we do have them. You got them? Everybody got that? Who remembers the first thing, the two things you got to remember when you're going through? Look at your notes if you want to. Who remembers the two things? What's the first thing you got to remember? Discouragement does not come from the Lord. It comes from our adversary, the devil. Discouragement does not come from the Lord. We talked about this last week. It comes from our adversary, the devil. Satan in the Greek means diablos, the one that has come to hinder you. There is a real battle that you're facing. Amen. And so discouragement is not coming from God, but yet God is still in control. Are y'all with me? And what was the second thing? When we, it, discouragement is an indication that we're walking by sight and not by faith. And that word sight means perceiving of the senses. The Bible says we shall walk by faith and not by sight, not from our natural senses. It may feel bad, look bad, taste bad, but God's still in control. And he's working it all together for our good. Amen? Amen. So those are, those are two, two key points that you want to remember, and that moves us right into six ways God has equipped us to encourage ourselves in the Lord. Amen? And I'm going to go over the first three. I gave scriptures for all the first three last week. You can go back and look at our messages on YouTube, online, and you can watch that, and the slides are there as well. So, six ways God has equipped you at Simply Become Church, one word on our YouTube channel will get you to our YouTube channel. Become Church, one word on YouTube will get you to our channel. And I want to thank God for our Facebook family, Facebook Live that's watching us. Make sure you interact with us. Be so kind to put the scriptures and, your, and the points in the comment sections as you watch along with us. Again, good to have you. First thing, recognize that you what? That you do not have to stay discouraged. Let's say the first one. Recognize that you do not have to stay discouraged. Don't, don't make a pity party. You are not called to live in discouragement. And if you have a habit of being down and depressed and being discouraged, guess what? You start making that your identity. That is not, I'm here to declare to you by the power of God, you are not called to walk in discouragement. You are called to encourage yourself in the Lord. And we're here to encourage you, amen? For every new worry, there's a new revelation in God's Word. You have to get into God's Word and say, Lord, what are you trying to speak to me in the midst of what I'm going through right now? Well, I'm having problems with my children right now, Pastor. What is God trying to show you out of that situation? Well, Lord, they're so selfish and they're so this. Where did they get that from? Maybe there's some selfishness in you that you need to help get out of you so you can help them. Are y'all with me? Yeah. Most of the time, God will, if you have coworkers that get on your nerves, most of the coworkers that get on your nerves are the ones that used to act like you used to act before you got saved. Are you with me? They don't revile God. Well, did you always re revere God? They don't revere God, they revile him. Did you always revere God? Treat them the way you, want to, you would have wanted to be treated. Love them into their change. Give them truth, but with love. Are y'all with me? You think they're going to get saved? You just, you just need to be saved. Think about it. When you unsaved, did that make you want to get saved? You know what made me want to get saved? There were some men and women that just would love up on me when I was in my sin. Be cruel to them, and they would just love up on me. And I'm like, man, they, they got something I don't have. Because I wouldn't take this from me. Are y'all with me? 
Now, what I'm talking about, you can't do in yourself. You need help from God. Are y'all with me? Amen. Secondly, so first we said recognize that you don't have to stay discouraged. What's the second thing? It's right there. Let's read together. Remember that if you know the Lord Jesus Christ, you are in covenant with God, and he has committed himself to take care of you in some situations, a few situations, every situation. So turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, why are you playing then? Why are you playing? If God's got your back in every situation, why aren't you depending on him to have your back? Are y'all with me? When the circumstances of life pressed in on David, David pressed in on the benefits of his covenant relationship with God. And we went over those last week. Amen? Third, you ready for the third one? Are y'all ready for the third one? I hear the front row and this left side. They, this left, they, they, they say, let me come on over here. Are y'all ready for, for the third one? How about in the middle? Are y'all ready for the third one? Here we go. Third one. Stop giving voice to your discouragement and start giving voice to the encouragement of Almighty God. Shut down that voice. Stop giving voice to your discouragement and start giving voice to your encouragement of Almighty God. Stop repeating the lies of the devil. I'm not going to be nothing. I don't have enough education. I don't have enough money. I know you have. God is the God of more than enough. It's not a money problem. It's a management problem. Amen. It's, a stu it's not a time problem. Everybody has the same amount of time. It's a management problem. So you got to get the wisdom of God to make wise decisions. You can't go on a shopping spree every time you get money. Get a budget. You got to have some savings and have an emergency fund. What's in that emergency fund? Six months of your income. Well, Pastor, I don't even got one month. Start building toward it. Start building toward it. Even with my wife, sometimes I was making $500 a month as a missionary. We were saving at least $10 to $50 every month. Every month. Just that $10 a week, drawn out, drawn out, drawn out. And we act like it wasn't there. You can have $10 for the way and say, okay, I got a problem. I got to go straight to that. No, use your faith and believe God. Are y'all with me? Start repeating the lies of the devil. Start speaking the promises of God. What? I am who God says I am. I can be what God says I can be. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. If God be for me, no one can stand against me. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. He's able to keep me from falling. Thanks be unto God that always gives me the victory. I'm, I'm quoting the word. The Lord says, blessed is the man or woman in Psalms 1 that, that, that walks in God. Are y'all with me? Walks in the counsel of God. That doesn't stand in the seat of the scorner. Amen? But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in it he meditates or she meditates day and night. Get in the word. Stop speaking out of fear. Start speaking in faith. What fear? False evidence appearing real. Walk in faith. What faith? Forsaken all I see, I trust him. Forsaken all I see, I trust him. Stop talking about the problems and start talking about the solutions. Stop talking about what you don't have. Start talking about what you do have. Start talking about what you want God to do. I was talking to somebody and in, 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 I'm working the fitness arena during the week, and they were saying, I'm so lazy. I'm so lazy. They were from another country. They were just talking about, I'm so lazy. I said, you're here. You're not lazy. Stop saying that. Don't say that in my presence anymore. Say I'm diligent. Say I'm hardworking. Say I'm, God is making me hardworking. God is making me diligent. Guess what? They went back and finished their reps even stronger. Are y'all with me? Because your mouth creates an atmosphere. Your mouth creates an environment. What you say and what you say to yourself, you will become. The Bible says it like this in Proverbs, as a man thinketh, so is he. You think it before you say it. If you start saying, I'm awesome, I'm great, I'm, I'm, I'm called to lead, I'm called to make a difference, guess what? You'll start believing if you say it to yourself more than you say that other stuff. Shut that other stuff down. Find out what the Word of God has to say about your situation. Start speaking it rather than your feelings. Are you ready for the fourth point? Yeah. Okay, I know he is. Yeah. Are y'all ready for the fourth point? Yeah. Are y'all ready to go home right now? Is this enough? 
Fourth point. You ready? Here's the fourth point. Here we go. Here we go. But, oh, before we, well, before we do it, I got to give you Philippians 4 and 9. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I will what? Rejoice. Rejoice. That's Paul. It's a decision. Turn your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's a decision. Turn to somebody else and say, it's a decision. You have to decide to rejoice. Amen? Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is what? At hand. Then it goes on and says, do not be anxious. Or you've heard anxiety. Be not, now this is not to condemn you if you deal with depression or heaviness. Hey, get some medical help if you need that as well and therapy. But get, get the word as well. Don't use that as an excuse not to get into the word. Do not be anxious about anything but in what? Everything by what? Prayer and supplication. And with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Guess what? Give God some praise for what you do have. The old folks used to call it an attitude of gratitude. The old folks used to say, count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. And you say, Lord, I got strength in my body. I'm in my right mind. I remember some old folks say this, I can walk and I can, and I can walk with my own limbs without any help. I got a job that I can go to every day. Man, I like everything about it, but I got a job. I got some income on a regular basis. Are y'all with me? I got family members that love me. You say, well, Pastor, you don't know my family. Well, I got one family member that loves me. Whatever it is, praise God for what you do have. Are y'all with me? And don't focus on what you don't have. Seven verse, and the what? What will happen when you do all this? The peace of God, which surpasses what? All understand. People won't even understand why you're handling yourself. Well, what? Guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And no, it goes on to say this. Finally, my brothers, whatever is what? True. Whatever is what? Honorable. Whatever is what? Just. Whatever is what? Pure. Whatever is what? Lovely. Whatever is what? Commendable. If there what? Be any excellence. If there's anything worthy of praise, do what? Think about it. Everybody say think about these things. The power of the mind, having the mind of Christ to think like God thinks. Are you with me? Turn to your name and say, neighbor. Oh, I like you a lot. I love you in Christ. But stop that stinking thinking. Stop that stinking thinking. So you can do all things in Christ. You can be all that God wants you to be. Are y'all with me? You're more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. Amen. And go on, it says this, this, look, if there's anything worth their praise, think about these things, what you have learned and received and heard and seen in my practice, these things, and the God of peace will what? Be with you. Emmanuel, God with you. And see, our point we got is your peace requires your participation, and it is what? Activated. Everybody say activated. activated. By your thoughts. Amen? You can either let the devil in or you can kick him out. It's all right, the devil may fly over your head, but if you let him come in and make a house and nest there, then that's on us. Are y'all with me? Say, I'm learning how to fight God's way. Y'all ready for the fourth point? Here we go, fourth one, meditate on the Lord. Meditate on the Lord. Meditate on the Lord. And that's in your notes as well. I'm going to give you some side notes under it. One of the Hebrew words for meditate literally means to murmur or to speak. Another word means to converse with yourself. It's like you're talking to yourself. Have you ever talked to yourself? Sometimes, something now, now here's the thing. I never forget, I used to coach sports, and I do occasionally. And I used to have coach, when I'm coaching basketball, football, different sports, kids would mess up or young adults would mess up, and they'd be like, man, daggone it, stupid, why did you do that? And I'd be like, hey, 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 stop beating yourself up. I need that guy. Oh, I need that girl. Are y'all with me? Your self-talk is important. The same way you're saying, you're stupid, that was no good, you could say, guess what? I'm going to get it next time. I learned from that mistake. Not going to do that again. Are y'all with me? Train yourself in self-talk, speaking what God is saying, because God's not beating you down. Only person that be, who's the accuser of the brethren, the Bible says? Satan. So you acting like him. Start acting like your father. 
Father God's encouraging. He's loving. He's saying, you can do it. Come on, there's more in the tank. He's saying, your best is yet to come. He's saying, it's not over yet until I say it's over. Amen? Amen. So you understand this. this. The way you speak to yourself about the things in your life, guess what, is what you're going to manifest in your life. Everybody meditates, but often it's on the wrong thing and on the wrong person or with the wrong focus. Let your meditation be about, firstly, the Lord and His promises, His works, His goodness, His word, and His love. Joshua 1 and 8. I want to give you scripture reference. When Moses died, this is what Joshua, God said this to Joshua. Amen. He says what? This book of the law, everybody say God's word, shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall what? That's that word. Meditate when? Sometimes. A little bit. The Bible says, in it, day and night, that you may observe according to all that is written in it, for then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good, good, everybody say good success. So you can have success, but it may not be good success. How many want good success? That means it's not making you miserable. You're enjoying it because you're staying in God's Word. You got balance. By the time you receive the blessing, guess what? You're walking in God's goodness and His grace. Amen? And it says, be strong and of good courage. That speaks of encouraging yourself. What's the word in encourage? Courage. Read a psalm every day, a psalm for courage and a, a proverb for wisdom. Just one a day will keep the devil away. One a day, a psalm for courage and a proverb. When I go through tough seasons, that's what I begin to do with my walk. Amen? Are y'all ready for some scriptures to meditate on? I'm not going to, I'm, I'm going to give you, ready for some ammo? It's not, it's no good having a gun if you don't have no ammo. You can't hurt anything, but I'm about to, I'm about to fill your spiritual gun. Because we wrestle not against flesh and blood with some spiritual ammo. And that's the word of God. Okay, here we go. First one is Psalms 48 and 9. We have thought, O oh God, on your loving kindness in the midst of your temple. What are you thinking about? You're staying, meditating on God's goodness and his loving kindness. How he's giving you a second chance over and a third chance. And how many have had several chances with God? And he just keeps on loving you and loving you and blessing you in spite of you. Psalm 59 and 16 says, but I will sing of your power. Yes, I will sing aloud of your mercy. In the morning, for you have been my defense and refuge in the day of trouble. Amen? Amen. Psalm 77, 6 says, I call to remembrance my song tonight, and I meditate within my heart, and my spirit makes a diligent search. Everybody say a diligent search. That means that you're working hard to find God in the situation. Are y'all with me? Psalm 77, 11 and 12 says, I will remember the works of the Lord. What do you mean? The things that he did in the past for you. and Because if you remember the past, if you realize if he did it then, he can do it what? Again. Amen? Surely I will remember your wonders of old. I will also meditate on all your work and talk of your deeds. Talk about it. Amen? Amen. Last but not least, Psalm 104 and 34, may my meditations be sweet to him. I will be glad in the Lord. All of these deal with a decision, but I'm not finished yet. Amen? The Bible says, I will meditate on your precepts and contemplate your ways. I will delight myself in your statutes, and I will not forget your word. Psalms 119, 15 through 16. Psalms 119, 97 says, oh, how I love your law. It's my meditation in all the day. My eyes are awake through the night watches that I may meditate on your word. Psalms 119, 148. I remember the days of old. I meditate on all your works. And I muse on the works of your handles, of your hands, excuse me. Psalms 143 and 5. Psalms now 145 and 5. Last one, I will meditate on the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your wondrous works. All these are talking about meditating. What meditation is simply recalling over and over what God is doing. If I'm having a rough day and I feel like I can't, I'm going to say over to myself, I can do all things in Christ who strengthens me. If I'm getting attacked in my mind, negative thoughts, I'm saying, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Whatsoever is pure, whatsoever is lovely, I'm going to begin to meditate on the scriptures over and over, rehearsing them in my mind, seeing myself walking in victory. Are y'all with me? It's power. I dare you to try it. I dare you to try it, to meditate on the word. 
Amen? Are you, are you ready for number five? Are you ready for number five? Get into the presence of the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord. How do you get into the presence of the Lord? By worshiping Him, praising Him. Everybody say praise. Praise Him. Amen. Praise Him. Amen. No matter where you are, give Him praise. Give Him a big hallelujah. That's my, that's my go-to. Amen. They know uh, if something breaking loose, is a neg- I'm going to have to call out a hallelujah somewhere and just, just change, shake up the atmosphere. Shake up the atmosphere. Devil, you will not have my day. You will not destroy my joy. You will not take my joy. Devil looks at me like, what? Wait, I just sent all this stuff to him and you praising God? Yeah, you keep, I may, I may break out in a shout. I don't need a music. I can, I can get going. I don't need any music. I may break out in a run. I don't need a good thing to happen to me to praise God. Are y'all with me? Because I understand I see the end of the battle. And if God has seen me fit to go through this, I know he's going to take me through it. Are y'all with me? Praise him anyhow. Turn to somebody and say, praise him anyhow. Praise him anyhow. Amen. Now, what you don't know is I had to fight to get this word out on discouragement. Whenever somebody's sharing on something, guess what? They got to go through it to give it. So I hope you get this. I don't know who you, who, who, who you are collectively, but I know God has sent me here to tell you, you are not called to walk in discouragement. And you are called to walk in victory. It's not over. Some of you are facing situations that seem insurmountable, like you can't get over. God has sent me here to tell you, you will make it out, and you're going to make it out strong in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. It's not over until God says it's over. Psalms 104 and 4 says, Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give him some praise for that. Amen? See, when you praise God, it requires a quality decision. I will give thanks. I will praise. I will. I decide to. Nehemiah said it this way, The joy of the Lord is my strength. Nehemiah 8 and 10. David said to the Lord, In your presence is fullness of joy. Psalm 1611. When we get into the presence of the Lord, we find all the strength we need and encouragement from every circumstance. Everybody say every circumstance. Last but not least, and I can spend all day on this, on this next one. Because you got to realize, but I got to go. It's time for me to wrap up. Amen. I went longer. Amen. Aren't you glad for the word? I'm going to hit it next week. Amen. I'm going to hit it next week. You can study Ephesians 6, 11 through 18. And we're going to hit, because it's about standing. Amen? Did you get something out today? Yes. Stand to your feet, everybody. Stand to your feet, everybody. We're closing out in prayer. Remember, I must participate in my peace. Amen? Yes. Amen. Did you get something out today? Raise your hand if you got something. Amen. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Let's close in prayer. Father, we just thank you right now for every person under the sound of my voice. Lord, that you're not finished with us. We yield to your will and your way. We trust you in spite of everything that we're going through. I want to say, head, head down, eyes closed. God is bringing you out. God is bringing you out. I want to just meditate. God, see him bringing you out of your situation. And it's going to be a testimony. If you're here and you're saying, Lord, uh, uh, the pastor, I need to be a little closer to the Lord, I want you just with every head, with your head bowed, just begin to just say this prayer with me. Say, dear Lord, come into my life. Take me deeper in you. I surrender every area of my life that's not like you. Change me from the inside out. I make you Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name. Holy Spirit. Fill me, baptize me afresh with fresh fire. Fill me with your presence. Fill me with your divine ability to be more like you. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, and in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Give God some praise. (laughs) Quickly grab somebody's hand. Just join. Grab somebody's hand. Hallelujah. Glory. So I can quickly, quickly, quickly. We got another church coming in. They're getting ready to have their service after us. We love this place. It's like nine churches that meet in this building. Amen. 
different races, different colors and shapes and sizes. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody, Victoria, grab your, grab your, grab your dad's hand. Let go, let go of her hand. Let go of her hand. There you go. There you go. Then she's going to get in between Wesley and her mom. I mean, Jeff, Jennifer and her mom. Wesley let her in. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Y'all ready? Are y'all ready? Destiny, grab, grab Sister Tecla's hand. He said, amen. We want to keep the circle of love tight. Is that all right? Yeah. We got to keep it tight. Amen. Hey, this is the family of God. You didn't choose it. God chose it. Hey, man, this is your community. Come on in, Lillian. God waited for you because you be. Hey, man. Uh, grab somebody's hand. <laughs> Come on. Father, we just thank you right now. We honor you for your presence. These are your champions. These are your people. Seal this word on the inside of us and help us to make a change in every venue that we're going to, in the marketplace, on our jobs, in our businesses, in the educational field, the medical field, the science field, technology field, the corporate field, business field, wherever you send us, fitness field, wherever you send us, Holy Spirit, we'll go. And we'll go with power and we go with strength. Touch all the students in this place. Help them, help them to give them wisdom beyond their years. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Give God some praise. If you can get your things and we can clear it out to the lobby and we take our conversations to the lobby, I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you, Facebook Live.
worship him. Just worship him. Have your way in my life, Lord. We surrender right now. We surrender right now. Have your way. In that situation, that circumstance, go ahead and give it to God. In that diagnosis, give it to the Lord right now. There's somebody watching on air right now. They told you it's over. But God said it's not over until I said it's over. Come on. Have your way in my marriage. Have your way in my life. Have your way, God. Have your way on my career, my job. We give it all to you, God. With my children, God. Have your way. Father, we just stand before you, Lord. We declare that you're in the room. And your word says, in the presence of the Lord is fullness of joy and life forevermore. We surrender right now, Lord. Come on, just everybody say, Lord, I surrender. Lord, I surrender. Every situation. Every situation. To you right now. To you right now. There's some of us that have come in here with circumstances that we're dealing with. And I hear the Holy Spirit says, in the midst of your worship, I'm fixing it for you right now. In the midst of what you're going through, God says, as you worship me, I'm fixing it for you right now. I'm making it right. I'm making it right. God, have your way. Say, Lord, I surrender. Lord, I surrender. Every situation. Every situation. 
to you right now. To you right now. I can't fix it on my own. I need your help. I need your help. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now give God some praise. Come on. If you believe that, give God some praise.